As mentioned, I am an educator. My name is Robert Taddy, uh, and I teach at Frankfurt Secondary School in the Surrey School District. Uh, I've been an educator for eight years now, and a lot of my identity is in my role as a teacher. And as the teacher stereotype goes, I love my coffee, and that's something you should know about me. I am super passionate about coffee. I have a million ways to make it. If you're interested in finding new and amazing ways to have a delicious coffee, just ask me. But my brother a while ago gave me a cylinder of coffee cups, paper cups, and I made a habit of drinking daily coffees with paper. So to rewind a little bit and say, before I became a teacher, what was my connection to nature? And that starts with uh, my family. My parents had about half an acre, and my mom would pay us a penny for each dandelion we picked. The thing was, we would wait for them to go to seed and then spread them so we could make more money. <laughs> now, becoming a teacher, the opportunity to uh, engage with the environment was pretty limited at an ur urban inner city school. And uh, the amount of green space that we had is incredibly limited. And so, what does that mean that we do? Well, I ended up doing school the exact same way as I experienced it. Kids in desks, in rows, heads down at their own page, pencil to paper. Day after day, sitting there, wondering how this was relevant and when they were gonna do something that they were passionate about. And then I met someone named Nelson Leon. And Nelson is one of our First Nations cultural facilitators in our district. And he did an activity with the kids for drum making. Except partway through the activity, he stopped them and said, this is not an activity. This is a way of life, and it's my way of life. And it got me to think about, how is what I'm doing in the classroom a way of life? I had the opportunity this summer to teach a different way, an inquiry program. Rather than teaching summer school the same way in the summer, as the kids didn't learn during the rest of the year, rather than having them sit at the desk again, the inquiry program in the summer looks to explore in nature and experientially. We got a chance to go to Grouse Mountain as a part of this program and participate in a sustainability in motion field trip. And here we got to see how the wind turbine uh, facilitates the production of electricity, how the gondola generates electricity, and students got to see from a new perspective, not just what their city looks like, but how their city is connected by nature. Kids imagine that the city streets, the block they live on, the place that they define themselves by is so separate from something else, but then we see it's not. We also had the opportunity to come to the Richmond Nature Park, and at the park, we had the opportunity to realize that our relationship with nature and with each other is reciprocal. That yes, we can take, we can enjoy blueberries, but sometimes when you have blueberry farms nearby, the invasive blueberry species find their way to the park, and birds poop and those, those seeds grow, and we got a chance to remove them. And I know you're probably thinking this is a load of BS, and I would say, yes, this is a load of BS. And I would tell my students this is a load of BS, and then I would define BS as beautiful stuff. That this is our opportunity to really find out who we are in relationships in relationships with each other and through nature. But what does that mean when we get back to school? It means that we can now create together. We can solve problems and propose possible solutions for the place, the space that we live, and the environment and the people that we interact with. We can define ourselves through nature. We can identify who we are as writers, uh, who we are in our math class, and figure out how that can change the way that we learn so, it could become, so that what we're doing in class is about our way of life and that way of life is connected to where we are. And so we can think of these opportunities to plant these seeds, these opportunities where these seeds aren't independent and we're not just placing them in the ground. I'm not defining as a teacher exactly what the learning is for the student, that the students are finding their own path, but we start with the connections. And so one thing that we've done differently is some of our students coming from grade seven to eight, from the elementary to the high school, one of the scariest transitions, rather than just getting that confusing timetable that no one can read and a new locker combination, we get them together beforehand to experience the relationships with each other 
And we get them to experience the relationships of each other in our natural setting. We go out to Blackie Spit. We go kayaking together. And we have some of our Frank Hurt leaders, some of those high school students, who might not be doing so hot in their math class or their social studies class, but they get outside and they're exceptional leaders. They know how to build relationships. And so this green space, this impossible green space, this opportunity to connect with the environment at Frankfurt was once impossible, and now we have the beginnings of a community garden, a school community garden where we've worked with local elders from the Friendship Center, other community partners, and it's student-led. Now imagine that you're sitting in your classroom, but now your classroom doesn't look like the classroom that you experienced. Your classroom is now our environment. It's place-based learning. It's understanding who we are in relation to the environment, in relation to each other. And so I still do have my coffees. I really enjoy my coffee. I'm not letting that go. But something I do differently now, and this is an initiative led by the students, was to ask the teachers to stop using paper cups. And so as teachers, we're using reusable mugs, and we're washing them, and because I was the one with the paper cup the most often, I'm leading that. So here I have an opportunity. My wife and I are expecting our first child March 1st, so it's quite shortly now. And I get the opportunity to see as my child comes into the world, the world is their opportunity now to explore. It's their playground. I look forward to exploring with them.